Ron, you told me that you started all of this 16 years ago. Tell me what motivated you again. Well, I have uh, quite an active curiosity. And uh, when I was about 15 years old, uh, which is about 45 years ago, somebody gave me a book. It was entitled God's Graves and Scholars, written by uh, Saram, and it was recorded the events of the excavation of Sir Leonard Woolley of the Earl of the Chaldees. And since that time I, time, I have been fascinated with archaeology. And so in 1977, 16 years ago, I finally found myself with enough time and with enough money to go out and see if I could find some of these things. You've been doing this full time ever since? Not full time. No, uh, archaeology does not pay a lot, especially if you're an amateur, which is my status. So I'm a nurse anesthetist, and I put people to sleep for surgery wake them up afterwards, and uh, that's how I finance my archaeological work. Are these presentations also to help you finance the archaeological work? Uh, to some extent. Uh, this evening we're doing this presentation on behalf of a family uh, Christian academy which is encouraging home uh, schooling uh, by parents of their children. And uh, so basically the money that, if, that comes in from this goes for that purpose. Where is that school? Well, uh, I think they have an office here in Knoxville. They also have an office in Madison, which is a suburb of Nashville, and I'm not sure where else. But they it's ask us to help homeschooling. homeschooling. Yes, okay. that's true. Uh, some of them feel that perhaps public education is a little careless in some areas, so they encourage this. All right, I just want to get a brief mention of that and explain. Um, what, what do you say to your skeptics, to the people who, who I, I, I just read reports from reports, people that dispute your findings? What do you say? Well, uh, I, my favorite people are skeptics. And you won't find, a, shall we say, a more determined skeptic than myself. Uh, most of these people that are skeptics have not seen the evidence. And until they see the evidence, as I mentioned to you a little bit ago, if somebody told me they had found all these things without showing me some very impressive evidence, I wouldn't believe it for a second. So I say more power to them, but if I were them and I wanted to find out, I would probably call, uh, and they're invited to do so, my house in Nashville, and we will show them the stuff, the proof. So you think you have enough impressive evidence to... Uh, yes. Uh, I, did, I don't convince easily myself. Uh, and uh, I show, if I run across anything negative, I show that just as quickly as I do the positive stuff. I think there is too much managed information in archaeology and in other uh, so-called disciplines of science. And I believe that people have a right to question things. But I do think that if they question them publicly, they're obliged to go and check it out before they do so. I think that's simply being fair. Now this may be the case in science, but when it comes to religion, what about faith? What about just believing that these things exist? And what's the point in finding them there? Is it well, uh, I visit a lot of churches. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the only churches I attend are those that invite me to come put on a program. And uh, I, I think that if you listen to any of the Christian stations or go to churches, you find that there are a lot of opinions about what the Bible means when it says certain things. And so so uh, also there are nearly six billion people on this planet. The vast majority are Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, people that have not heard anything about the Bible and the God of the Bible or Christ, uh, our Savior, except in jest or ridicule. And so uh, I believe that the reason for these things that God has preserved and is sharing with us today is to help these people 
become persuaded that the Bible is a more reliable source of information than what they have access to date. I say nothing bad about anybody's religion for the simple reason that if I had been born where they were and taught what they were taught, I would be of the same opinion they are. And so I feel that Christians have no bra bragging rights over Muslims, Hindus, or Buddhists. Uh, I do think that we have an obligation to reflect what we claim to believe by our actions. I don't see a whole lot of that today. I see a lot of talk and very little, uh, shall we say, of the real thing uh, reflected in people's lives, and I'd like to see that change. Tell me what's happening next with Noah's Ark. We have a permit to do a partial excavation on Noah's Ark. <clears throat> the last time we were out there, we had the misfortune of being in the wrong place at the wrong time and some Kurdish terrorists took us hostage. They were looking for some uh, publicity. They were looking for any Westerners that happened to wander along and we wandered along at an inopportune time. Anyway, we were able to make our escape and uh, so at the present time, one of our friends and co-workers was out to Turkey just last week. While he was there the first night, 13 individuals were killed in police and military actions against the terrorists in the area. And in that kind of climate, it's, uh, shall we say, uh, a little beyond the risk taking level that I'm interested in to try to do this. You but wait till things down here basically, right now. well, uh, I'm getting older and, you know, uh, I would like to get it done last week, but we'll have to wait until things clear up to the point that we can be reasonably sure of being able to get the job done. Okay. Um, and you have, you have put your own money into this. Oh, That's sorry. correct. I would say something in excess of a million dollars. Why haven't you taken grants? Well, in uh, archaeology training, they tell you, you don't dig up a site to see what was there. You decide beforehand what you want to be there or have been there and you make it happen. To me, that's not scientific uh, investigation. When you accept grants from most uh, sources that grants are available from, you get control. And uh, I had rather go slower and be able to show people exactly what's there without, I think that if I take the risk, spend the money and time to document all this stuff, that that entitles me to express my opinion. But I am equally uh, determined to supply all of the raw data to everyone that's interested. How are you keeping other people out? Well, uh, I'm not. Uh, are there various governments? There's a visitor center out by Noah's Ark. Anybody that wants to run the gauntlet out there is more than welcome to go. However, in order to do any work on the boat, you have to get a permit. Mm -hmm. When did you bring that piece of wood out? In 1987, uh, the same day they dedicated the site as a national park and uh, shall we say laid the cornerstone for the visitor center. Now, you were mentioning in CBS documentary um, the claims, the, the argument that people have with, with uh, the location of, of Noah's Ark. Tell me what that is again. Tell me what the argument is. Well, basically most people when they read the story in Genesis 9, they uh, read and the ark came to rest on the mountain of Ere. It doesn't say that. It says the mountains plural.
line right across here and right across here. At this point, they, it shows that they put too much glue in there. When they pressed this together, the glue extruded out and ran down a little ways and hardened and that has fossilized in that position. So we have uh, people that uh, produce uh, rocket motors, jet engines, that are studying this uh, laminate or this glue to see what it's made of. And so what we have here is something similar to plywood except the pieces or the boards are thicker than normal plywood. And uh, it's made of pecking roll. What is that analysis plot back? Well, it uh, shows that this, uh, these have titanium, uh, manganese, uh, molybdenum, and some other things that are considered space age metals. Now, the way uh, something that was called to my attention is that in Genesis chapter 4, verse 22, it talks about Tublacane. It says he was an instructor in metallurgy and iron and brass. Well, iron is one of the hard, hardest metals to refine, and brass is an alloy. So apparently in the fourth generation after Adam, they were familiar with how to produce those metals. And the flood occurred in the 10th generation, and it appears that things got more sophisticated, which is not out of line what you would expect.